If you're new to dropshipping or you're looking for guidance on how and where to start, then you've come to the right place. I'm going to show you all the steps you need to take in order to set yourself up for success in the dropshipping industry. Now, I've personally been dropshipping for years and have done over 8 figures selling products. I've had over half a million dollar days, multi-million dollar months, and sadly enough, days where I have lost a bunch of money. I can confidently say that I've been through a lot and have learned many things in my journey that I'm going to share with you today. And no, I will not sell you a course and will never do. I just want to provide valuable content. So let's not waste any more time and dive in. Now, before I go over anything, I want to make things clear for you. I want you to understand that when you're dropshipping or when you're doing business in general, you need to approach things with the right mindset. Now, I know that this might sound boring and you just want to get started, but I can tell you that from years of experience and having met a lot of successful people in this industry, a lot of it comes down to you approaching things with the right mindset. This is important and I need you to pay attention. I've seen so many people fail because they just approach things with the wrong mindset, thinking that this is a get rich quick scheme when it's really not. They're not patient or have the desire to work long hours. They test one product and if it fails, they just quit and start spreading negative comments about this industry. And in reality, this is all a numbers game. If you fail with one product, you cannot just make an assumption that this industry is a scam. You usually need to test a few products until you find a product that works for you. The more you test, the higher the chances of finding a winning product. There's just no way on earth you'll be able to make 50,000, 100,000 or 1 million dollars your first month unless you're lucky. Your chances are quite slim because there's a lot of competition out there and you need to know that. You have to approach things with the mindset that you'll be consistent in your execution, constantly improving and not giving up. Because trust me, it is easy to overcomplicate things in this space, so I advise you to keep things simple and take them as they come. And you certainly don't need to know everything directly from the start. Just take one step at a time and learn as you go. Otherwise, you will start overthinking the smallest things and move in slow motion. So now, when you're starting out, your main concern should be What should I sell? How can I stand out from the competitors? How can I make my website, product images and branding look better? Or how can I create better content? Or maybe you can create a better funnel to upsell customers with complementary products, giving you a higher average order value than your competitors, and therefore allowing you to spend more per acquisition than your competitors. So you need to approach it this way. You need to somehow stand out and not approach it in a way where you're like, how much money can I make? Or how fast will I be able to make money? Which is exactly why I'm recording this video for you. Because trust me, the money is there. You just need to do it right. Now, when you're starting out in dropshipping, there are five stages that you will come across. And for each stage, you need to execute it the right way so you can maximize your potential of success. And that is stage number one, finding a product to sell. And this one is quite obvious because you cannot start setting up the store or work on anything if you don't know what to sell. The product is everything here. I will go over how and where you can find a product to sell very shortly. The next stage is, well, you would have guessed, building the store. This is the stage you will need to spend a lot of time on because your store is where you'll be sending traffic and you need to ensure that your store is optimized for conversions. Next up is stage number three, which is marketing. This is one of the hardest stages because here you'll need to start sending traffic to the store you have built and you need to have a profitable cost per acquisition to keep going. Now the fourth stage is fulfillment. After you start sending traffic to your store and people start buying, you have to ship the product to the customer in a timely manner. Now, since you're dropshipping and you're not holding any stock in advance, your supplier is. And I will give you the list of suppliers that I personally work with later on. The last stage is customer support. This stage is crucial for maintaining customer satisfaction and ensuring repeat business. Once customers have made purchases from your store, they may have inquiries, concerns, or issues that need to be solved. Providing excellent customer support is essential for building trust, credibility, and loyalty with your customers. Now that you know what stages you will come across in your journey, let's begin with stage number one, which is finding a product to sell. Finding the right product is the foundation of your dropshipping store. 
You need to find a product that's in demand and that people actually want. It can be a product that solves a problem like this posture corrector for example. It's a product that helps people with a poor posture to maintain a straight posture. Or this insect window screen that stops insects from entering a household. In my opinion and from personal experience, you will have a higher chance succeeding by selling products that actually solve a problem and help people with issues that they are having. Because products like these are just irresistible to people and there will always be demand for them. Now of course, there are products out there that are cool or has a wow factor effect to them that could also work. Like this fire magic wand for example, which recently went viral on Instagram and TikTok. It's just a magic wand that shoots fire. It does not solve a problem but it's cool because it's unique. It's not easily available in local stores and chances are people have not seen something like this before. However, if you're just starting out, I strongly recommend you to go for problem solving products instead because it's just more on the safe side. So now that you know what type of product to look for, you might be wondering, where do I even find these products? Is it on AliExpress, Facebook, Instagram or TikTok? Well, I personally believe that your best bet would be to sell a product that somebody is already making money out of. That way, you know that the product is already a winning product and you can just take a piece of the pie for that product. So instead of you having to go find a product on for example AliExpress that you know nothing about and you set up the store and start running ads for it, just to find out that the product is the winner, you can use a software like Joshua.io to look for actual Joshua products and see how much revenue Joshua's are making with the products that they are selling. Then, if you find a product on Joshua.io that somebody is selling and making a lot of revenue on every day, you can also start selling the exact same product. Because if they're making money with it, so can you if you find a way to be different and have an edge over them. I know that many 7 and 8 figure dropshippers use this method when they are doing product research and it's working very well for them. And if you want to see me do product research live and find a product using this strategy, then you can watch my most recent video where I go over it. It's called Ultimate Dropshipping Product Research Method. Now once you've found a product and you're sure that it will sell, the next stage is building the store. So before you start building the store, you need to figure out what type of store to build because there are three different types of stores. A general store, a one product store, and a niche store. A general store offers a wide range of products which is suitable for testing a lot of different products, but it can be challenging to target a specific audience with it. A one product store focuses only on promoting and selling a single product, making it easier to create a strong brand identity. And lastly, a niche store concentrates on a specific market or product category, for example, only fish or beauty products. However, if you're starting out, then I advise you to go with one product store. It is just much easier and faster to set up, and the conversion rate on a one product store is typically higher than the other types. But if you wish to test multiple products, then you can go with a general store. It all comes down to your personal preference. However, for me, I personally only go with one product stores and that's the type of stores that I've had the most success with. Okay, so after you pick the store type, now you will need to start setting up the actual store. Now here are a few things you need to keep in mind when building the store. Number one, clean and user friendly design. Create a visually appealing and easy to navigate website. A clean design with clear and high quality product images short product description with GIFs if suitable, and a lot of social proof such as reviews. Number two, a branded look. Make your store stand out from the rest. Make it look branded, use premium colors and fonts with a nice logo. In other words, make it look expensive and not like a typical dropshipping store. Avoid using scarcity tactics such as count on timers or messages like only 10 units left in stock. This is garbage tactics that don't work anymore. Just keep it clean. Number three, store structure. Your website must load very fast, preferably under three seconds, both on desktop and mobile, because the majority of your traffic will come from mobile. If you use Shopify to set up your store, you shouldn't have to worry about slow loading times. Just avoid installing way too many apps on your store. Now, I will not set up a store for you in this video because I don't want to make this too long. However, if you want to see me build a store from complete scratch, then please comment down below. So now that you have an understanding of the store building stage, let's move to the third stage and that is 
marketing. So for the marketing stage, this is when you will need to start sending traffic to your website so that people can buy your product. Now, there are two types of approaches you can take when it comes to marketing. The first one being organic marketing and the second one being paid marketing. This all depends on your budget and what you believe is the most appropriate thing to do in your situation. But both of these approaches can work. If you're tight on budget, then I would advise you to do organic marketing, which basically means that you will order the product that you will sell to your home, then create short form content with it and post it all over Instagram Reels and TikTok. With this method, you're not paying anything on ads, but you're relying on the social media platforms you post on to push your video so it goes viral, which is why you need to put a lot of time and effort into creating engaging and great videos. If we have a look at this TikTok page, for example, this is clearly a dropshipping store and they're posting videos very often. Now, if I copy their store link and paste it in dropship.io, we can see that they're generating sales. And that just proves that this method is working, even though it's free and there is no risk. But again, you still need to create content that generates views and traffic. Now, if you have about $500 to spare on ads, then you can go with the paid marketing approach. However, keep in mind that the ad you create has to be very, very good. So it's important that you study how other successful dropshippers create their ads so you can do the exact same thing. And for paid marketing, I would advise you that you start with Facebook ads because Facebook and Instagram has a more mature audience than, for example, TikTok. And to do the paid marketing approach, I've uploaded a video on my YouTube channel called Zero to $1,000 a day in 48 hours dropshipping with Facebook ads that you can check out. In that video, I go over how to set up the Facebook ads and you can copy my exact method since it has been proven to work for me many, many times. So now that you have an understanding on how and what to do when it comes to marketing, Let's move to the next stage, which is fulfillment. Now, for the fulfillment stage, when you do start receiving orders, it's important that you fulfill them in a timely manner and make sure that your shipping time is fast. There are, of course, a lot of methods to fulfill your orders. It can be done through, for example, AliExpress, but the shipping time there is oftentimes extremely slow and the suppliers on AliExpress don't really care about serving your customers right. What I and most of the big dropshippers do is fulfill orders through private suppliers. So when you have at least five to 10 orders coming in consistently per day, I would recommend you that you fulfill them through a private supplier. Now I've put the contact details of the private suppliers that I personally work with in the description of this video. Just message them on Skype, tell them how many orders you have and what product you want to ship and they will get back to you. Also, another great point to why we all work with private suppliers is because on top of you having a better shipping time with private suppliers, private suppliers usually offer better prices than AliExpress suppliers, which is great because this will allow you to have higher profit margins. Now, if your sales are inconsistent and you're only getting a few orders per day, oftentimes private suppliers will not want to work with you because sometimes they have an moq in place which basically means minimum order quantity which is the minimum amount of orders your store needs to be getting per day for them to work with you and in that case you can use tools like cj dropshipping zendrop or AutoDS. there are many of them out there that's that for the fulfillment stage and now for the last stage in your dropshipping journey is customer support now the customer support stage is what will complete everything in your dropshipping journey. When you have orders flooding in, many customers will reach out asking for a refund, when the order will arrive, or any other inquiries. So it's important that you answer them and provide them with good support. In the beginning, I strongly recommend you to answer your customer inquiries yourself. That way you will have an understanding of the problems that you have in your business. And oftentimes you'll be able to solve those problems and avoid that they happen for future customers. So don't outsource the customer support stage immediately. I know that it can be boring to ask your customers, but trust me, this is the proper way to improve your business. But after you start receiving a lot of customer inquiries, then you can outsource. You can post a job listing on Upwork saying that you need a customer support agent and many will reach out to you. Then you can use Zendesk to manage all the customer support inquiries. Now, this is the five stages you need to master in your dropshipping journey. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video on how I built a complete Shopify store from scratch. All right, I hope I was able to give you a good understanding on how dropshipping works 
and how you can start in the best possible way. If you found this video useful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more valuable content. Take care for now.